supercharged 51 over here. I hope you're having a splendid day wherever you are in the world. Guys, we're back with our self-created 2020 Formula 2 World Championship driving at Nobuharu Matsushita for MP Motorsport. And as you guys can see on screen, it is the current championship standings. We are leading by all by a very long margin. Um, and for some other reason, I feel that we are not going to be caught by any anyone specific so far, but still the Formula 2 has got some fantastic racing and we're definitely going to keep this championship going. So before we do anything, remember to drop a like down below on the video. It's only going to take you a nifty two seconds and let's get into this weekend. We are heading towards the Interlago circuit in Brazil, Sao Paulo. Well, in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Sorry, I swapped those two. And um, the F2 cars don't drive here in real life. So this is what's going to be a very interesting and most definitely a fun experience. You guys, yeah, this is a little bit of a moment in practice where I hit the wall and also get a puncture um, and then I had a little bit of a moment coming out of the final corner but other than that practice went swell and it is now time for one shot quali so let's get straight into it Sitting pretty right here in the garage, guys. Obviously, we gotta go out on the soft tires. Just a quick double check on the setup to make sure everything is still all nice and dandy. Not as much things to tune as on the F1 cars, but that is no problem. So now it's time for quali. So let's head around this beautiful Interlag Interlagos track and go here for a lap around in a Formula 2 car. Heading into, into the center is the first corner. You have to take a wide line on corner entry and mount that inside curb. Also, take the curb on the on the inside for the middle part of the corner and on the way out of the center is just plant your foot all the way down the f2 cars do struggle a bit with understeer through that corner so you need to have a lot of steering lock in, um, input there into t4 very 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 nice line into here touch that curb on the inside just slightly and run it out towards the outside curb through t well that's still t4 going onto that final outside curb now heading into this double right hand as we head in towards the very technical middle sector very, very aggressive line through there, but stay away from the outside curb because it's very easy to lose control of the rear end and invalidate your lap. Through the right-hander into this long sweeping left-hander where you need to plant the power as early as possible coming out into the final right-handed hairpin. You can very, get onto the power very early coming out of this corner as well. Just apply it smoothly through this downhill left-hander which is flat out in an F1 car, not so much in an F2 car and basically into the final corner which you have to break for. Now heading down this flat out section all the way uphill towards the line. You guys can see I am at this stage in P1 but Callum Eilat is in my mirrors. We head towards the line, hug the inside of the track. We come across the line and it's going to be P! The grid is all set for the race tomorrow, but before we go, let's quickly remind ourselves of our top three, which are Matsushita, Eilat and Robert Schwartzman. It's time to leave for now, but we'll be back tomorrow when the feature race gets itself underway. It's finally here, the day we've all been waiting in anticipation for, race day. The Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache circuit has been home to many exciting events in motorsport history, and I have no doubt today will be just as memorable. 15 corners make up the 2.7 miles of the Brazilian circuit. Turn one provides an excellent opportunity for overtaking, but also provides the most challenge, requiring pinpoint accuracy which will no doubt be even harder to pull off in the wet conditions we're experiencing out on the track today. Drivers can expect a similar challenge driving uphill during Sector 3, which has seen some of the sport's most spectacular incidents. I'm joined by a man who's had many a wet race, Davide Valsecchi. Just how challenging will these conditions be out there on track? Delighted to be here, Alex. Even in this weather, nothing will be easy for them. We may have standing water, which means visibility will be a worry. They just need to stay clear of the white lines and curbs. That can cause you a real problem when it's so slippery. 
As we're now moments away from the off, let's take a look at the grid order in which they'll start today's race. An immense lap from Nobuharu Matsushita yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's Callum Eilat in P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Schwartzman, Sonoda, Marino Sato, and Schumacher, Giotto, Aitken, Tictum, Felipe Dragovic, Markelon, Galeo, Marcus Armstrong, and Lungard. Joe, Nisani, Alesi, and Jan Deruvula, PK, and Guillaume Samaya, Mazepin, and Louis Delatraz starts from the back of the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Okay, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. That is the idea, Jeff. We're going to try and make you proud as well as the team. Guys, spanner in the works. It's heavyweight conditions for the beginning of this very, very long feature race. You guys know I run 100% race length with it when it comes to F2. Um, it's going to get drier at the end, but um, we've, got, uh, we've got a very treacherous time to start this race. Hopefully all goes well. And um, yeah, I thought about tweaking the tune setup for the front wing, but I just left it, just took it back to a three. But guys, it's time for the race if you're not to the, new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe down below and don't forget to ding that bell to never miss a future episode and you know the drill jam with me on the warm-up lap oh yeah surface into the first quarter you got to see what a pull away from Yuki Sonoda here we actually maintained P, um, P1 heading into the first corner I actually didn't have too much rear end slip coming off of the line it's Callum Island and Yuki Sonoda side by side heading through the third quarter and ending the center is side by side still for the car and, and the uni virtuosi driver heading down the back straight well yeah this is the back straight yeah it is the back straight you got to see I go a little bit defensive just to make sure that, that Yuki doesn't try anything back to the racing line and Yuki gets up the inside of Callum Eilat followed directly behind by Robert Schwartzman in the Prima. Beautiful start there from Yuki Sonoda. We're going to jump back on board with Sonoda quickly. But you guys can see Yuki Sonoda actually has so much pace coming out of the fourth quarter. He actually tries to go around my outside. Very, very, very bold there from Yuki Sonoda. He had a beautiful run coming out of T4 and I had a little bit of a tank slap. But, um, but guys, um, you guys even saw on the, on the warm-up lap, I spun. The track is so slippery that I spun on the warm-up lap. So, yeah, this was, I, that gave me a bit of a scare, I'm not going to lie to you guys. So I was r really, really, really going to be very, very feather-footed for this, these first few laps, just to get used to the car in these conditions. And unlike um, AI, which are coded to, to adapt to, to these conditions immediately, I had to first get a feel for the track. But luckily, I was in the lead, so I could, you know, I could find my feet. You guys can see coming out of the fourth corner, I just have a little bit of a, you guys see a little bit of an oversteering moment and that enables Yuki Sonoda with his beautiful exit to come on my outside and try and get a move done. But in these treacherous conditions, a move around the outside is near impossible. But we still lead the way, heading into the second sector, beautiful main, main maintenance of the car thus far. We are just keeping things slow and steady and um, 
just hoping to keep the car on track because that is the main focus and as soon as the track starts getting drier and we start getting more comfortable with the car itself in these conditions then we will start pushing but for now let's just try and keep this car in the lead and try and keep it on track that is all that is the only goal in mind heading through basically the final corner guys i'm just going to call that the final corner so just get used to it um we get through the final corner up towards the line we've got about just under half a second on yuki sonoda but he is now going to be slipstream man mcgee and do we talk to jeff or did i just accidentally press the button right now, but it's going to take a while for the track to dry out Okay, so guys, we just had a quick question about the weather conditions. Um, uh, so you guys can see it's still going to be a fair few laps before we have any sign of dry weather running. And you guys see this is actually Robert Schwartzman coming in for a very early stop to strap on a second set of heavyweight tires. I think Schwartzman is trying to go for some sort of fancy undercut. Not actually sure why he's doing this, but... Um, yeah, shorts, but it's not even, it's not just shorts, but there comes the BWT race lab crew, one of the Carlin cars, that means Jay and Daruvala is in, there's four cars trying this strategy, so maybe these guys are going to be a threat at the end of the race, I highly doubt it, I don't think this is a smart choice, but you never know, we'll see what happens come the end of the race, um, and then you guys see they are just going to come out of the pit lane, and we are going to jump back to our POV as we end lap four and start lap five. Great work. That's a new fastest lap of the race. And as you guys just heard from Jeff, we just set a new fastest lap. And slowly but surely, I'm getting acclimatized towards the, the conditions out on track. But you guys can see there, the car still wants to step out on me. It's still very, very treacherous. But we've at least pulled a, one, a, a, a bigger than one second gap on Yuki Sonoda. So we are reasonably comfortable. And we go again and set a purple first sector. So you guys can see, I, th I, I, I think we've got to ride on board for this entire lap, actually. So let's enjoy this on this very, very treacherous Interlago circuit. You guys see, I go off the line just to make sure that the tires still wet. The, well, that the tires are still wet. Because eventually, you guys can already see, we are starting to drive um, a dry line onto the track. So these wet tires, they, they, they keep their temperature better and also they, they don't wear as much if you just make them wet now and again so going off race the race line. The gap to the car behind is 1.5 seconds. They're on old wets. Their tires are nine laps old. We think they've got one more stop. The time last lap was a 1 minute 29.3. So you guys can see, I am extending the gap towards Yuki Sonoda. We are now, we will, that was um, a lap 10 into the race. We now jump onto lap 14. And you guys can see, now that the track is starting to dry out, Sonoda is actually starting to pick up the pace again. So he's starting to catch me back up again. You guys can see on the bottom right, the tires are really starting to feel the way. Heading on towards lap 16, you guys can see here we are once again purple in the first sector. So I realized Yuki is starting to push. So I need to start uh, actually giving an answer towards him because it doesn't help. He, ke he keeps pushing and I'm just, you know, holding back and he's just on to my rear end again. Because you, you guys can see that it's not raining as hard as it was at the beginning of the race anymore. And the clouds are starting to dissipate. They are starting to go away. So we need to really start being very... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I almost spoke in Afrikaans right now. We really need to be um, on point with how the track conditions change because it's now starting to go into the that point of the race where the track is going to start drying out ev quicker every single lap. So, yeah, you can see that I actually swapped onto the soft tires because I thought the track was still going to stay wet for at, at least until lap 25. Um, so we still had a fair, a fair bit to go. Um, and I really thought that the soft tires would be able to do about 15 laps. Um, but we're now, you guys can see, we only head on to, I think it's the end of lap 18 or 19. And the track just instantly started drying out. So I swapped my tires from the softs onto the mediums. So we are going to end this race on the mediums, uh, meaning we don't have to stop again. And um, I'm pretty sure that the other AI are going to do exactly the same. But officially, it's going to be a happy hour in the pit lane because I think almost every single one on the grid is coming in for a stop now. Off of the wet tires, which are very close to being shot, onto a brand span new shiny set of mediums and now we're going to finish the race on this tire coming out of the pit lane i still need to be very careful because the pit lane is going to be very slippery and you guys can see because it's still very damp in the pit lane so i really need to be steady with my with my footing on the way out of the pit lane on the inside and now we get back onto the track and mark Armstrong has actually stayed out 
um, on the wet tires. He still feels it's it's still damp enough to, to uh, make the wet tire the quicker one. But guys, I could immediately feel a difference in grip. So um, it was definitely the right choice to go onto the mediums. You guys see the gap towards Sonoda is less than a second. He is keeping me very honest. Throughout that first stint on the wet, I never bridged the gap to over two seconds. Sonoda, sorry, a little bit of an oversteer moment there. Sonoda was keeping me honest throughout this race. And as you guys look towards P4, Callum Eilat, he is 9.7, basically 9.8 seconds back to Yuki Sonoda, not even to me. So yeah, we two were running away with this race. The two Japanese titans fighting it out here in Formula 2. And um, Yuki Sonoda was definitely, definitely giving me a hard time. And you guys know, as soon as the slick tires come out, the DRS will get enabled. So Yuki Sonoda has now the extra help of that rear wing opening up on the straights to actually try and mount a move on myself. So this is where I really started to, you know, get a little bit of a, I wouldn't say stress, but I, where I had to be a lot more wary of what Sonoda was doing. We jump on board with the second unit virtuosi car of the Chinese driver Guan Yuzhou as he is lining up a move, I think, on Christian Lungard in the ART. Heading up the hill towards the first corner, Guan Yuzhou opts for the outside line to stay on the racing line. He forces Lungard to go to the inside. He's got the inside for the middle part of the corner and will he drive around Lungard? Yes, he will. And that is Guan Yuzhou up a position. We now jump onto Roy Nassani in the Trivent as he is now trying to mount a move. I'm not sure on who. But there's always also some threat looming from behind in the form of the high tech of Nikita Mazepin. Here we go around the outside goes Nassani and he tries to get the move done. He is still on the outside. I think this is also still Christian Lungard. I'm not even lying. I think Guan Yu Zhou just checked out. But here comes Nassani around the outside. Yes, it is still Lungard. Nassani on the outside, but he is pulling Mazepin with him as they head into T4. Beautiful move from Nassani, but now we have he's got Mazepin as a problem around his outside, does Lungard through T4. T4 heading up the hill towards T5 once again and Mazepin will have the inside line beautiful racing there from Mazepin and Lungard and that is now Lungard down three positions and he's got one of the Campos racing cars in the form of Samaya right behind him DRS open very close between these two drivers side by side up the hill over the start finish line Samaya is on the outside Lungard is on the inside a little bit of a lock up there from Samaya heading into the corner but luckily he's got the space on the outside he keeps the line on the inside of Lungard and he does exactly the same to Lungard, which is Zhou and Nassani. Did beautiful run there. Here comes Nikita Mazepin trying to mount a move here on Roy Nassani. Up the hill once again. Mazepin opts for the inside to, um, of Nassani. Beautiful run there. Mazepin is a little bit shabby there, but I think Nassani got the message quite clear. You got to see now the, the clouds have dissipated a lot. The sun is out. It's a beautiful day here at Interlagos and the battle for the lead is raging between myself driving as Matsushita and Yuki Sonoda but I defend from Sonoda heading into T4 but guys he was just not letting go he was like a pit bull biting down on a piece of meat the jaw is locked he wants this win just as much as I do and it's a Japanese war out in front here for the Formula 2 feature race victory in Brazil here we go through the center is Sonoda is once again very close towards my gearbox you guys can see I immediately go to the inside to try and defend from Sonoda but he is just too quick with DRS enabled he tries to move around the outside once again but just I'm later to the brakes and I just park the car on the apex and there is nothing that Yuki can do about it you can see I hug the, the the inside there to have the optimal racing line for this next corner and that is beautiful driving there from both of us we now jump back on board with Guan Yu Zhou and I think he is now behind our Tim Markolov in the BWT race lab car he opts for the inside of T4. Beautiful move there up the inside of Artem Markolov does Guan Yu Zhou make. And that is a beautiful move there. And Guan Yu Zhou is up another position. I think that was actually a move for P8 or P7 if I'm not mistaken. But we jump back towards myself and Yuki Sonoda battling away here for the lead. Carlin VMP Motorsport. Japan versus Japan. And yeah, just the, the, the two. I wouldn't know. Yuki Sonoda is actually a rookie in Formula 2. I'm the veteran. Rookie versus veteran. And so far, myself as the veteran uh, um, is prevailing we jump back onto the wards the second trident of marina sato beautiful livery car this and he is being chased down 
Five. Who is this actually? Is this also Mazepin? I'm not exactly sure. Look for the 24. No, that's actually the number 25. So that is Luca Giotto going for a move here on Marina Sato. Beautiful move up the inside of the first corner. And now also Sato has got Jack Aitken in the campus, right and tucked up right underneath his rear wing and sniffing his gearbox oil towards the, the fourth corner. Here comes Aitken. Will he take the outside line? I think he will, but Sato has just got to skip into the inside. He locks up. Sato has a, a very bad luck of hitting, hitting into that corner, but that just enables Sato to basically park the car on the apex and Aitken has to wait for another day. We now jump back on board with myself, guys, as we start the final lap of the, the, the 2020 Formula 2 self-created championship here. You got to see, I'm still leading the way from, from Sonoda, but he is still right there in P3. You've got Eilat, P4, Schumacher, and you've got all these other drivers fighting for, for, the, um, for positions here because remember, the sprint race, the top eight will be reversed, and this is the battle for, for positions for that race. Here we go, there we go. It's Eilat, Schumacher, Mazepin, and then you've got Samaya and and the Nissan is scrapping away heavily here. Samaya is right around the outside and Samaya is at his home Grand Prix. Well, his home, his home F2 weekend because he is a Brazilian heading towards T4. Samaya v Nissan, very close quarters here between these drivers, but Samaya, oh, Samaya. But Nissan, just squeezes out Samaya towards the outside, but Samaya keeps his nose in there. He's going to have the inside heading up the hill. Will he put his nose in there? Yes, he will. Side by side for the Campos and the Trident heading through this double right hand uh, into another right hand a beautiful move there from Samaya and I'm sure the home crowd would be cheering very much for Samaya but you guys can see we're here towards the end of the final lap and you guys can see I've got eight tenths on Sonoda I did enough work to make sure that I uh, can have a smooth run towards the line 40 very treacherous and hard fighting laps he kept me honest but we take the win for the feature race here at Interlagos you worked hard for that one congratulations It wasn't always plain sailing today, but a very important win nonetheless. Davide, what do you think made the difference here? It was down to one thing, consistent pace over everyone else out there on the track. We could spend a great deal of time talking about race and tire strategy, what has occurred on the track, but at the end of the day, the difference here was down to simply being faster on track than everyone else. Amazing skill on show. And look at that, they're making their way out onto the podium now. Great race from the MP Motorsport team, and I'm very happy to see them up there on the top step of the podium. Now then, Davide Valsecchi, who would you say was your driver of the day? Lots of drivers impressed me today, Alex. But if I have to say one that impressed me most, it's Nobuaru Matsushita. Goodbye for now then, but we really are just getting started. Make sure you join us again for Lights Out tomorrow. Guys, what an absolutely awesome Formula 2 feature race. Starting in probably some of the most treacherous conditions I've ever driven in, but just maintaining the lead, making sure that Sonoda stays behind us after an absolutely lightning start from the Japanese driver. It was a beautiful battle between myself and Sonoda, race long. And guys, don't think for one second because I basically led the whole way that this was easy. Sonoda literally forced me to push lap after lap after lap and in the beginning of the race it was highly uncomfortable in these conditions but what a race for myself and Sonoda. Guys that has been um, the feature race. Guys basically if you have made it to this far in the video yeah um, thank you very much please drop a like down below on the video if you're new to the channel make sure to hit that subscribe down below we are so close to 200 subscribers so please help me out get yourself subscribed ding that bell to remember the future episode and also while you're down there go check please go check out the links in the description down below and also guys um remember the sprint race will be posting first thing tomorrow so um in not long after you've enjoyed this very 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 stressful and action-packed sprint uh, feature race the sprint race will be up first thing tomorrow so guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much for staying till the end and guys also just a quick mention when you go down into the um to the links in the description down below make sure you go check out my south african clan falcon gaming and please show some your some love and support over there and also guys thank you so much for all for all the support with my world record 
skateboard video, which was the video literally in front of this one. I highly appreciate you guys' support. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys for the sprint race tomorrow. Cheers!